Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Adrenal Fatigue Podcast. It is Danielle and Angela here today, and we are so thrilled to have Dr. Sue Love on the show to chat about parenting throughout the pandemic, specifically parenting and the impact that it's had on our health, whether you're beca- you've just become a new parent or you're just really noticing the crunch of burnout that has impacted you throughout the pandemic. We really want to shine a light on this topic today, and we are so excited to have this conversation because it truly has never been more important. Without question, the pandemic has impacted us all in so many ways, and for parents, it has been particularly challenging, and we are noticing, both Angela and I in the Adrenal Recovery Collective and Dr. Sue, as you're about to find out in this episode, that the impact on parents has been enormous, and it is trickling into different health issues. And we are so excited to chat about this topic in more detail, starting right away. So we're about to get started, but first we just wanna tell you a little bit about this incredible doctor, Dr. Sue Love. So Dr. Sue is a proud naturopathic doctor and the co-founder of Restore Integrative Health here in Toronto, Canada. She has always had a passion for health and she loves to share this passion with her patients. Dr. Sue has treated a variety of patients across all ages and various issues. Dr. Sue's practice focus as a naturopathic doctor includes digestive health, energy optimization, stress-related concerns, and hormonal health. So that includes fertility, perimenopause, menopause, pre- and postnatal, and so on and so forth. We are so excited to have this important conversation with Dr. Sue on the show today. And before we jump in, I just want to say that Dr. Sue has actually been my naturopath for the past several years, and I cannot sing this woman's praises enough. She has helped me so much through overcoming burnout, helping me regulate my hormones. I'm working with her closely now as I navigate through this pregnancy that I'm in currently in month eight of, and I am so endlessly grateful for her support and wisdom, and she's just so nurturing and amazing at what she does. So we're so excited to have her here and in our lives to have this conversation today on the Adrenal Fatigue Podcast. So with that, let's jump in with Dr. Sue. Welcome to the show, Dr. Sue. So happy to have you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's so great to see you both today. I'd love to start with what drew you to natural medicine and what does your practice look like today? Yeah, so um, a couple of things drew me to naturopathic medicine. So uh, first off, I would say my own health journey. So um, I was diagnosed in my early 20s uh, with PCOS, and um, I was just not satisfied with the way that it was handled uh, with my family doctor, to be honest. Um, The approach didn't seem to address the why, and that's something that, um, as a naturopathic doctor, I absolutely love now is really exploring with women, you know, why things have happened. And um, it was through my experience in working with a naturopathic doctor that I uh, got a taste for this medicine and to see really um, how um, important it is to look at that underlying cause. And, um, you know, because of the work that I've done with my naturopathic doctor, I ended up having, you know, no trouble conceiving and have two beautiful girls as a result of it. So I'd say it was really through my own health journey. Um, I also um, used to work at a medical diagnostics company in uh, business development. And that was another thing as well, that through that um, avenue, I ended up actually working with naturopathic doctors and um, going to some of the naturopathic conferences and in seeing, um, you know, some of the information about the approach that they take and um, the way that people just absolutely love their careers. That was sort of the final nail in the coffin for me of saying, yep, this is the thing that I want to do. I love that. I'm going to jump in there for a second because your journey is a, a similar start to mine in that my own finding out that I had adrenal fatigue in the first place, this was quite a while ago, eight years ago or so, was also because of my own journey in in having trouble conceiving as well. And so it's interesting. It's led me down this path and how much I appreciate it so much because I didn't have to go down a path of, you know, invasive procedures or any kind of too much stress around the infertility because it was, you know, I was told that, you know, everything was fine hormonally, but then I knew that there was something else going on. And so I seeked out um, alternative integrative medicine. And that's how I sort of started my journey as well. So anyway, that's, that's interesting. Um, Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing. So I'm curious um, how you, what your practice does look like today. 
Yeah. So um, I have a practice based in Toronto and um, I work in a multidisciplinary clinic um, that I own with a partner and another naturopathic doctor. We're in an amazing thriving neighborhood called Leslieville. Um, so at our clinic, we have um, massage therapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, psychotherapists, and acupuncturists, and then the two of us as naturopathic doctors. And um, my main areas of interest are really in women's health. So, you know, helping women with hormone cycling, fertility, postpartum, um, perimenopause, many menopause, as well as, um, you know, really looking at stress and energy. And I'd say, honestly, in my practice, about 95% of the cases that I see have stress as a major contributing factor to them. And in different people in different bodies, it's just a matter of how stress can manifest for that individual, you know, so we see a lot of things like headaches, digestive concerns, hormone imbalances, mental health concerns, fatigue, insomnia. And it's so fascinating because so much of it is, um, you know, uh, inspired by stress or influenced by stress. Yeah, I love how you mentioned that whole idea of how stress manifests in our bodies differently. And I think depending on where we hold, you know, our stress and just sort of how we go about our life and, you know, yeah, how we clench and where we constrict in our bodies is a huge, you know, way of showing kind of telling how where we are, um, where we hold our stress and how that's manifesting with um, various health conditions. And there's such a wide range of of conditions and symptoms that fall under that umbrella, right? Of, of yeah. being uh, stress induced or, so it's, it's pretty um, interesting and, and really was so eye opening to me. You know, I think people often, even people listening might be surprised is how many of the symptoms can really come back to a root of uh, the root of hormones. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. And and that's actually how my journey or like my meeting with you, Dr. Sue, happened a very burnt out Danielle back in the day, happened to be walking by that beautiful clinic in Leslieville and <laughs> made an appointment. And then you've been just helping me so much ever since. Oh, um, so great to be here. Yeah. So we're just so excited to have you here. And we're curious, like since the pandemic, these last couple of years, have you noticed any patterns with moms or new parents coming in? when it comes to like burnout and stress? Yeah, hundred percent. So, I mean, I would say, honestly, at this point in my practice, um, I'd say most moms are pretty burnt out at this point. Um, And, you know, it's been really tough for moms for a number of reasons. And I think to me, what it boils down to is looking at you know, mom stress. And, you know, it's something that uh, my business partner and I, we used to do a lot of talks to, um, you know, postpartum moms and, um, you know, talking about typical parent stress, right? There's so many stresses. So, you know, um, one, one big one is, you know, just that our body doesn't even know the difference between a baby and a bear, right? It's just, it's a stress. It's a perceived stress. And we get in, we go into fight or flight when we hear a baby cry, the same way as we would run from a bear if we ran into them in the woods, right? And then on top of that, there's, you know, sleep deprivation and new responsibilities and, you know, the challenges in asking for help and the changes in relationships with your partner and managing family members and financial strain. And I mean, really the, the, the list is endless. And then also, you know, just physical stresses of carrying kids around and breastfeeding and, you know, having less time for yourself to recoup and, you know, for your adrenal glands and for our bodies to um, actually be able to recover. Um, so, you know, we have this typical parent stress and then we have pandemic stress. Right. So, you know, it's not just <clears throat> having a baby or a child, which is stressful enough, which we already, already mentioned, but then we, then we're in a pandemic and there's, I mean, I remember at the beginning, like we didn't know if we'd be able to, to get food. Like we, I've never in my life had food insecurity as an issue, but now, you know, you have a baby and a, an older child and we don't know if we can get food for them to eat, you know? Um, and then not, not being able to ask for help even because you know, you're not allowed to have people in your house. You can't hire them. You can't ask your friends or family to come and help out. Um, You can't have someone come and even, you know, do something like clean your house, if that would be something that you'd be able to do. And then, you know, you're isolated and you're not able to connect with other parents. 
you know, you can't go anywhere. There's no parent centers open. You know, you can't go to the library. You can't go to group programs, which are all the things that so many um, new parents and parents generally really look forward to, you know, in connecting with other um, people and really creating the village. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, for people who have school age kids, you know, there's the homeschooling, having no extracurricular activities for the kids kids and then you know navigating kids emotions around all of this uncertainty and change and then you have the kids at home which means you have less time for your own self-care right and then people who are juggling you know kids and work they're you know working in the day or sorry working in the evenings after their kids go to bed and then they can't go to sleep because they're on their screens so you know there's just so many factors so you know when I think about um you know parent stress or new parent stress and then pandemic stress and then you layer those on top of one another it's no wonder people are not feeling great these days yeah 100 sure. it's so much it's wild <laughs> yeah. so parenting wasn't hard enough just add teacher to that and everything exactly. it's like wait a minute most of us don't know what we're doing um, no. in that department <laughs> Yeah, I was going to just say so many of my friends, like you almost don't think of it this way, but it's like a grievance, right? Like you expect your maternity leave to be yeah. all of these things that you wanted to do. And then for so many women or, you know, new parents out there, it was just completely different than what you expected. And yeah. that's like a, that's a, a hit of grief. And there's like resentment and feelings that along that go with that, that contribute to the stress even more. And it's, it all just piles up, right? It all piles up. Yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've really seen in my practice, you know, that, um, like that, you know, we, I, I'm sure you talk a lot in your podcast about, you know, healthy cortisol rhythms and things like that. And, you know, so many of the things that I've seen come up in my practice are clearly because those things aren't happening properly anymore, because the adrenals are pretty burnt out, you know, we've been, you know, stressed for so long, you know, we're now at basically two years of this, um, you know, and then for people who have kids or who have new babies in that time frame, And, you know, so I'm really seeing, you know, um, cortisol, um, just being very dysregulated, I call it where, you know, we aren't seeing a healthy cortisol curve where, you know, it should come up in the morning and then slowly decrease through the day. And then melatonin picks up at night. And then, you know, that should keep, help you to get to sleep and stay asleep. But, you know, what I'm really seeing is, you know, people will say to me, oh, I'm so tired, but then I get this wind at nighttime, you know, after my kids go to bed, that's the only time I can get anything done. Yeah. And then of course they can't fall asleep because they're trying to do everything. They're trying to do like a full day's work in that time. Um, you know, or they're, you know, waking up in the night because, you know, they're like their cortisol is spiking in the nighttime and that's waking them up or in the morning, they're so tired and they can't get moving you know, because potentially they're not making enough cortisol to even get them going in the day, or they're really crashing in the afternoon, even despite, you know, making sure that they're eating regularly and their blood sugar is not dropping, um, you know, and it's because they're not making enough in the morning to really get them through the day, you know, so, you know, really, um, I've seen lots and lots of things, um, you know, present in my practice that I, I think are very related to this, for sure. Yeah, you mentioned some some very common ones and what we see with um, in our practice for sure. And so, I know that you you know work a lot with moms and with, on helping with the, you know really balancing out that curve and helping people with natural hormone balancing. So, what do you see as like the biggest lifestyle influencers, you know, that have the most powerful effect in making people feel better? Yeah. Uh, good question. And it's always, it's so hard to boil it down to like the biggest because you sort of end up with like a laundry list. But sure. I think that honestly, one of the, one of the biggest things is exercise for people. So I find that when people are, you know, doing regular exercise, it doesn't have to be, you know, an hour a day, but just some sort of exercise. Um, I notice that people cope so much better from a stress perspective and it helps so much from a mood perspective. The other thing too, is that you are finding a way to do a little bit of self-care. And I think that part of that as well is that empowerment of saying, I've actually set aside a little bit of time for me. And as a parent, that's, it's not our intuition, but it's so important, right? Um, you know, we know theoretically that you need to put on, you know, when you're on an airplane, if it's, 
you know, if, if there's an emergency, you have to put on your own mask before you help your child, but it's not going to be your instinct, right? Um, but that's something that I really find that if people can keep up with just that basic thing, you know, exercising every second day-ish um, for even like a half an hour, they tend to feel so much better. Um, and then, you know, I mean, I mean, there's a lot, but, you know, I'd say another biggie is like just getting outside. It's a really big one. Um, I think for a long time, especially last year when like the real lockdowns were on, people weren't really going out very much. And now they're sort of in a groove of not really getting outside very much. Um, I see it's kind of an interesting thing. I've, I've noticed this in when people have been working outside of home for a long time and then now they're working at home. I'm finding a lot of people, they have a lot of trouble waking up in the morning. And I think a big part of it is that they're not getting outside in the morning. So they're not being exposed to natural light, which is really important to um, have a healthy circadian rhythm and for our body to know, okay, it's morning, I'm going to release this cortisol, which is going to keep me, um, you know, give me the energy that I need to get through my day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I want to um, just, you know, touch on the fact that you talked about movement and the importance of movement regularly. And I think that that is so important. And I like to kind of almost lump the two together, like movement and movement outside. Like yeah, those are like my exactly. two, like biggest um, tips for people is like incorporating those things. And I totally agree with you. And I think where a lot of people get stuck and uh, um, I'm sure you might see this too, is that we feel like we have to do a certain amount of time it has to be this long um, yeah. you know hour long or even half an hour long and you know it does I think those expectations um, hinder a lot, a lot of us and kind of stop us in our tracks because we think we just don't have the time yeah. or it has to look a certain way we have to go to the gym and I just have found that in my own life how powerful it is just to know that what if I just did 10 minutes you know yeah, <laughs> a quick burn exactly. or what if I just took a walk around the block or yeah. um I have, you know, half an hour before I have to pick up the kids. Can I just, yeah. you know, go to the local park and walk um, for a few? Mm -hmm. And and also just that expectation of I've never been a person that likes to go to the gym. That's just not who yeah. I am. Um, yeah. But I've always been very healthy and fit. And it's because I love incorporating like what I love to do into forms of the movement, whether that mm -hmm. be yoga, roller skating, dance, like there are other forms. And so just reminding, you know, the women, the moms out there, like, how can you incorporate movement into time for yourself? Or maybe if that isn't possible right now, time with your kids and how to move with them. So. Exactly. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is I, I as I go home, um, I pass the beach. And if I, even if I have five minutes, I'll stop and I'll just walk down to the water. I'll just, you know, find a parking spot, park, um, you know, walk down to the water, just take a couple breaths, do a little loop and go back to my car and then head home. And I find, um, you know, when, when heading into an evening with kids, you know, heading into it grounded is really important because that time of day is challenging for everybody, you know, cause everybody's tired. And, um, you know, I just find that, um, doing those little things for myself make a, such a huge difference for sure. I totally agree. And sometimes it's easier said than done, but yeah. it's like if you can set yourself up for success uh, by m just choosing that when you need it, um, I think that that's something that we don't, it doesn't always come easy, but it's, it's when we start being aware of and, and kind of looking ahead and thinking, okay, I'm either going to go home and I'm going to be crunchy and, and yeah. I'm going to have a quick, uh, a short fuse, or I could stop for a few minutes, even just in the driveway, yeah. and take some deep breaths because what do I want to create, you know, as I step into my home tonight? So I think exactly. that's a really good reminder. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So Dr. Sue, you mentioned the cortisol rhythms being out of whack as a common thing that you've been seeing lately. And so we're just curious, is there anything else that's been popping up a lot as just like common issues or common susceptibilities that you're seeing with these yeah. parents throughout the pandemic? Yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit about um, some of the main things that I've been seeing. So, you know, as I mentioned before about the cortisol rhythm, so definitely sleep disturbances, insomnia, you know, trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep, for sure. Um, we talked, we touched a little bit um, on the low energy piece, right, and how the cortisol could be, um, you know, contributing to that. Um, but another thing that I've seen a lot of recently in my practice is headaches and migraines. 
Um, I think I've, I've seen more migraine cases in the last two years than I probably saw in the previous eight years of my practice. Um, I'm finding that they're really common. And I think that a big piece of it, a, a big part of it is stress. Um, and, you know, from a muscle tension perspective, you know, people carrying, um, you know, tension in their shoulders and potentially working from home, not in the best ergonomic setups as well. Um, you know, and then carrying around kids. I know for me, like when I'm with my kids for multiple days in a row, I always end up with like tight muscles and like a tight neck. Um, so yeah, a lot of muscle tension, a lot of headaches, um, and then a lot of uh, mood issues as well. So, you know, low mood, anxiousness, um, even just like irritability, like people will contact me. They're like, my fuse is so short. I feel like I'm going to blow every second. Um, and that's definitely a big, um, stress is a big part of that, but mood could also be a component of that. Um, and then, you know, for some people it's, a you know, their susceptible area is their stomach or like digestion generally. Um, so, you know, a lot of people who I've seen, you know, historically with digestive issues that we've sort of settled down, they've contacted me recently saying, you know, okay, I'm constipated again. I'm having loose stools again. I'm bloated. And all of those things can be because of stress for sure. Um, weight gain I've seen a lot of over the last little while for sure and then something that I'm I'm seeing um, now and now that we're sort of at like the almost like the two-year mark is with that really chronic long-term stress is um, immune stuff so sort of seeing you know in when when you're first in a stressful situation your immune system actually gets boosted but when it's a really long-term stress situation your immune system gets a bit suppressed so i'm seeing different um, infections and things come up you know people getting cold sores shingles um you know different things like that that they've never really had issues with before so yeah it's it's interesting to see how for different people it's different areas right and um you know it's uh you know it really makes makes me realize how much work we need to do right now to support people and how people need people like you and like me to be able to help guide them through this and to help support them because the um level of stress that they're experiencing is just more than we've ever seen in you know in all of history and you know, I, I was at a conference a little while ago and they were talking about mental health and how right now there's the, the most people are having mental health issues that they've ever seen in all of history. And it's because of the stress of the pandemic. So, yeah. you know, again, when you add a, a child or children in there or a new parent, um, you know, no wonder people aren't feeling very good. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, for those of people out there, like this could be kind of new, like hearing about all these connections and how stress truly affects the body so deeply. And there's some people who are still kind of figuring that out, like not fully realizing that having that short fuse isn't normal. Like it's not, it's not necessarily, it's normal given the circumstance, like, yeah, of course, but um, not necessarily something that you have to live with. There is a lot that you can do su to support foundationally that can really make a big influence. And we're definitely excited to talk about some of that stuff um, before we wrap up today. So maybe this is a good chance to ask you if you have, obviously this is gonna be different because it depends on the person and mm -hmm. what they're going through and it's so different for everybody, but it, is there anything that you use in practice, whether it be like a tea or any sort of recommendation, even when it comes to herbs or nutrients that you find really supportive for people just kind of in a general sense? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about, it'll probably be more specific because that's how I work. Okay. Um, it is, you know, in more yeah. um, specific cases, but I would say, you know, when, when thinking about um, off the bat, of, okay, so we've had a lot of stress, our bodies having to had to make tons and tons of cortisol. One thing that we look at is, okay, well, what nutrients might end up depleted because of that? And um, a couple of the top ones um, are B vitamins. So vitamin B5 specifically, that's a cofactor that the adrenal glands use 
as well as magnesium. And a lot of people have heard a lot about magnesium. Um, so B5, it's a, it's a very um, essential nutrient for the adrenal glands to make cortisol. And, you know, it's found in uh, food, which is nice. You know, it's in things like molasses and lentils and tuna and sprouts and things like that. Um, and I do find that sometimes when we um, use something like a multi B5 type supplement, I find it can kind of... Um, uh, start to replenish people and like nourish them back up a little bit for sure. Um, and then as I mentioned, magnesium. So that's another one that's often depleted during times of high stress and it's also needed by the adrenal gland. So we go through it really, really quickly. And what's interesting is that when magnesium is deficient, um, it can lead to things like muscle tension, restless legs, insomnia, headaches, anxiety. And, um, you know, it, using some magnesium um, can be really helpful for those things for sure. Now there's a lot of different forms of magnesium and dosing. So I'd recommend to get some guidance on it for sure. Um, but you know, it can be, I find that it can be really, really helpful to sort of um, balance things out. And again, sort of nourish people up who are a bit depleted because they've been stressed for such a long time. Um, yeah. Yeah, one of my other favorite things is something called um, phosphatidylserine. Um, and phosphatidylserine is really neat because it actually decreases cortisol levels. So I'll commonly use that when we see that um, people are having, um, you know, sleep disruption because their cortisol is increasing in the nighttime and um, or we use it like before bed. So, you know, when people are getting that sort of wired up and then they can't fall asleep type picture. Um, so that's a really um, interesting nutrient that um, really can help to curb the cortisol levels so that you're not having excessive amounts when you don't want them. Yeah. So those are some of my go-tos. And then, I mean, there's lots of um, really nice sort of adrenal supportive herbs where, you know, they can help, um, we call them adaptogens. So what they do is that they help, um, you know, if our body is low in something, it'll help to bring it up. So like with cortisol, for example, or if we're producing too much, it'll help to bring it down. So I really like the herb with or ashwagandha as well as rhodiola. Um, and then licorice is something that I use when people's cortisol is on the low side to help kind of like boost them up a little bit. Yeah. So those That's are some that. of my go-tos, I would say. Yeah. And I love that you started with the kind of the foundations, like the bees and the magnesium. A lot of times when people come to us, their very first question is like, what adaptogen like should I take? And yeah, it, we find that it can become almost like a prop. Like you just go right to adaptogens, but not really nourishing up your reserves, which yeah. is so important. So I think yeah. that's, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh yeah, you're welcome. And especially in the long run, right? Like you don't want yeah. just something that is going to make you feel better today. You want something that is really going to set you up to be more resilient in the long run and to be well nourished for when that stress increases again. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm curious for those who are newer to naturopathic medicine, integrative medicine, functional medicine, I'm curious if you could just share a little bit about uh, your process that you take uh, someone through if they're coming to you for the first time, what that whole process looks like. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, as, um, as a naturopathic doctor, what, what we do is we have people visit either visit in person or we do virtual consults these days as well. Um, where our first session is about an hour in length. And during that time, we take a really uh, detailed history of, um, you know, your concern, what you're experiencing, um, day to day. And then we always look at anything else that could be contributing. So, um, you know, as, uh, you know, we were chatting about earlier, you know, when it comes to stress, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that that can manifest in the body. And, um, you know, so sort of looking at the interrelationship of these different systems, you know, we don't have different systems in our body, we don't have a stress compartment and a sleep compartment and a mood compartment, right? It's so important to look at all those different things, as well as, you know, past medical history, family history. And um, based on that information that we gather in that first session, what we do is we put together an individualized plan um, with you. And um, 
you know, that always, I always outline for my patients, you know, what exactly, what, what exactly we're going to do as well as um, any next steps. And sometimes those next steps are to do some more digging. So to gather some more information. So for example, if you've had blood work done, we would requisition it. If you haven't, sometimes if we think that it would be helpful, um, then we would recommend to have some blood work done and we would coordinate that. And then we always talk about how long it should take for people to see an improvement or a stabilization in whatever is happening with them. Um, so that's sort of the initial process. And then, you know, as we go along, um, we touch base periodically at, you know, the, um, at a time frame that, that would make sense um, to make sure that we're going in the right direction, address any um, other issues that come up and make sure that we're getting um, to achieve the goals that you had come in with, essentially. Awesome. Thank you for explaining that, walking us through it. Great. So kind of going back to what we were talking about in parents, um, I want to know if you have any advice for new parents, parents to be, or parents feeling overwhelmed right now. What would be your words of wisdom for them? Yeah, great. <laughs> really great question. So, you know, I think um, step one is just know that you are going to get through it. That would be my first thing that you know, there's always going to be hard days, but you will get through them. There's going to be great days and just embrace them, but know that whatever stage you're at right now is going to pass. So that's one thing that I would say. Um, the other thing is I would say, um, you know, I found for myself in this time frame that it's so important to adjust your expectations of yourself. Um, you know, for me, historically, I loved a tidy home, you know what, with a five year old and a two year old around, it's just not going to happen. And if I spend my time focusing on the fact that that hasn't happened, I'm like, imagine what my stress level is going to be, right? I can't have that be an added stressor in my life. Um, so yeah, just adjusting your expectations of uh, whatever you're holding yourself to based on your pre-child um, expectations. Um, I'd say as well, you know, just taking as much time as you can for yourself to regroup. So it's hard. It's so hard to sneak in those little moments, but even just a minute or two, you know, if you can go to the bathroom and just close the door you know, just take a couple of breaths or, you know, recruit your partner. If you have somebody close by who can just watch your kids for a couple of minutes. So you can just take a little walk around the block, right? It doesn't need to be that you're gone for a day, but just even those little things. And then, you know, I've even, uh, I found a very therapeutic time for me is like going grocery shopping at nighttime when the kids are already in bed. Like I go on my own and I take my time and the store is empty. And like, it's one of my little, um, you know, simple pleasures that I've discovered, you know, in these past couple of years. Um, you know, if you're a bath person, have baths, um, explore hobbies. Like we have to find things that um, are going to bring us joy. And, um, you know, I would say just make sure that you're as, as hard as it is, make sure that you are taking time for yourself to regroup. And then... I'd say one of the other biggest things is that it's so important to reach out for help. So, you know, whether that be, you know, friends, family, um, you know, professionals. So, you know, I, a lot of my patients, I'd say the majority of my patients, I recommend that they speak with a psychotherapist, a social worker, somebody to be able to chat through and to chat through what's going on with them and to help develop some stress coping strategies. I find, um, you know, when I work with somebody and they also see a therapist, um, things just improve so much more quickly and people tend to feel so much better. And it's very empowering for them to know that they can manage um, day to day. And then also, you know, get, get physical help if you need it. So, you know, with respect to your physical health. So, you know, if you enjoy going for massages, acupuncture, you know, if you're achy, go see a chiropractor, an osteopath. Um, you know, we're thankfully we're at a time in the pandemic right now where, you know, we can go see these people and they're there to help you. Um, and at the same time, you know, as a parent, I think one of the hardest things to do is to ask for help. And to say, I need this. And, um, but it's, it's one of the most important things you need it, you can't do it alone. Um, so, you know, create your village, create your community with, you know, friends, family as much as you can, but also don't be afraid to reach out for professional help. 
um, because we can all use it and it'll make your life a lot better. Yeah. I love that. We absolutely love those tips too. Yeah. Um, I think it's so important. And I think um, what I love that you shared was this idea that, you know, we have to have strategies. We have to have, create time for ourselves. And um, we, we've talked about this. It's not always easy, but uh, and sometimes a lot, a lot of those things that we, you mentioned, you know, for some people, it feels like, well, how am I going to be able to do all that with you know, time yeah. and money and all those things? And so my biggest advice, too, is like to add on to what you were saying is like get, getting creative also as a parent, right? Your time yeah. is so minimal. So, you know, um, for me, when that was a little bit tighter and, and, and time and money and things like that, it's like you got to get creative with trading with your friends or, you know, reaching out to people maybe you wouldn't normally and asking if they want to trade or trading, you know, your services um, for other services, things like that. So sometimes it takes getting scrappy and creative with some of that um, and just being open to to that support, I think alone is just like, okay, what can I do to make this happen? I am a powerful you know, creator. I am a powerful woman. Like when I want something, you know, it's like, I can make it happen. You know, just like, I guess, think about too, when you want like this new pair of jeans or whatever, right. You're going to do probably whatever it takes. You're going to like trade something in your closet or something, mm -hmm. or, you know, sell it on, um, on marketplace in order to get that new thing or whatever. So thinking about that too, in the realm of like, how can I get the support that I need to, to go to the chiropractor, to go get some body work, to go, um, you know, take myself um, out for, um, you know, a good time or whatever it may be. So um, yeah, that, that's been a good lesson for me too, as, as a mom to really, to really uh, look for that and, and be open to possibilities. Uh, and um, don't just limit yourself to being, oh, there's no way I can do that. Or that's just not something yeah. that's possible for me. Look for the possibilities, be open to it showing up. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so when, much for sharing the, all that. Oh yeah. Oh, go yeah. Ahead. One last thought I just had as well is I know um, one thing that I find a lot of people in their downtime do right now is they go on their phones and it isn't like, to me, that is not stress coping. I know people like it gets their mind off of things, but um, you know, it, I find that it doesn't help people in the long run. And so I find a lot of um, moms that I chat with, they'll say like, I don't have time to take a bath. And I'm like, okay, so walk me through your evening. What's happening? And, you know, they'll say, you know, so my kids are in bed, maybe it's a little bit later. And they're like, you know what? My kids are in bed by nine. And then what do I do? And then they say, well, I don't know. I think I'm on my phone. Like, I think I'm just scrolling. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Just put your phone away and go take a bath. Like, um, play the piano, read a book, like do something that isn't on your phone because a phone is stimulating and you're so stimulated all day. You don't need more stimulation, right? We don't, you don't need to be reading the news before bed, even if it's mindless though, just the nature of screens is very stimulating. And so, you know, I know for myself, I kind of get in these grooves where I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, I don't feel good. And then I'll like put my phone away in the evenings for a little while. And you realize just how much you really need that downtime. So that's just one other little thing that I wanted to mention that I think um, is really important for sure. Yeah, I love that. And you mentioned that it's not easy. Like a lot of this, like it's not always easy to carve out this time. And and one common trend we see it all the time, and especially with with moms or like tired parents, is yeah. it's almost like this that you don't remember the things that you like bring you joy. So sometimes we ask, like, well, what is it that you like to do and what fills yeah. your cup? And it's you struggle to like think of, well, what is it? I haven't even yeah. thought about it in so long. So it's almost like that self-inventory after yeah. listening, you know, take a moment to think about what those things are and get yeah. scrappy. Like Angela said, right. Like yeah, looking, I love that. how can you just take a couple minutes to do a little bit of that? And you probably will, will feel so much better just sneaking some of those things in. And yeah. it's really important for you yeah. and for the family. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's such a good point because you will be, you will find yourself being happier the way you're showing up as a mom. So it's like, yeah. it's actually, you know, more important for you and, and, and your family when you take time for yourself. I have found that to be so true. And um, so yeah. thank you for adding that. It's really important. That's great. So this has been great. Dr. Sue, where can our listeners find you if they want to learn more or see what you're up to online? For sure. Yeah. So um, we have a website here at the clinic. So it's uh, restoreyourhealth.ca. And then um, we have an Instagram as well, which is restore integrative health. 
So those are probably the two best options. Um, my personal Instagram is basically pictures of my kids. So you're welcome to look at that too. It's Dr. Sue Love dot nd um but uh yeah for for great health related info i'd say check out our restore instagram yeah. okay and we'll for sure link everything in the notes for everyone but thank awesome. you so much for sharing all this wisdom this is such an important topic and s- never been more important to have it so we're so grateful for your time today awesome well thank you so much for having me it's been a lot of fun and uh yeah thank you so much thank you dr sue <laughs> 